from the New Testament, as we do every Thursday. We reading from John second. We are going to read the letter of John, the third letter of John. To the beloved Gaius, whom I loved in truth, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul pros prospers. For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, and just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. We are reading from uh, the third epi epistle of John. We are now in verse 5. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers who have borne witness of your love before the church and you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God and you would do well because they went forth for his name's sake taking nothing from the Gentiles we therefore ought to receive such that we may become fellow workers for the truth I wrote to the church but Diotrephes, who loves to have the preeminence among them, does not receive us. Therefore, if I come, I will call to mind his deed, which he does, prodding against as malicious words, and not content with that, he himself does not receive the brethren, and forbids those who wish to putting them, who wish to putting them out of the church. Beloved, do not in imitate what is evil, but what is good. He who does good is God, is of God, but he who does evil has not seen God. Demetrius has a good testimony from all and from the truth itself, and we also hear and bear witness, and you know that our testimony is true. I had many things to write, but I do not wish to write to you with pen and ink, but I hope to see you shortly and shall speak to you face to face. Peace to you. Our friends greet you. Greet the friends by name. Amen. We are now in the third epistle of John that was sent uh, in 90 AD, 20 years after the destruction of Jerusalem. And in, the, in reality, the end of the first apostolic church. As the only that is alive from the ten apostles by then, from the beginning, the twelve that were with Christ on 30 AD, 60 years that is, because they were selected at 30 AD, the only one alive, and he was the youngest among the disciples back then, is Apostle John, that should be. 20 years of age when he was selected and that is why he is now alive in 90 AD and computing that will be that he is 90 years of age and he is the person for which the Lord our Lord Jesus Christ said when Peter asked him what about him O Lord because he, Christ, uh, replied to Peter, saying that there's going to be time that you're going to grow old and you're going to be taken to where you do not want to go. And there you're going to be put in death, to death. And he confirmed the way of his death and the way that he's going to glorify God. And of course, at least accordingly to uh, the sayings of people that he died on the cross and on the opposite state than Christ because he did not want to imitate Christ and now Peter was asking what are you going to do with this one and he was referring to John what are you going to do with this disciple they were great friends before Christ invited them under uh, Andrew and Peter and John were friends and Christ replied, "Why do you, what do you care? Why do you care about him?" And this is a very important message that we need to understand. Why do you care about what the Lord is going to do with your brother? We should not care. What we need to take care of is our relationship with Christ and the relationship and what Christ is doing in our lives. And in this message, 
we in this mistake we fall many times when we are sitting down and we are thinking about the ways that others are conducting their lives but instead we should be praying so that God may bless everyone those that we are having a good time with and we having a good relationship with but also with the ones that we do not appreciate let's say they do not appreciate us and we do not have a good relationship but we need to have a clean relationship with everybody in front of the eyes of God and if they are hating us we need to do have good deeds to them if they afflict us we need to show love instead this is what God wants us to do and this is what he said to Peter why do you care about what I'm going to do with John and he continued on to say what if I want him to remain alive until I come back what is this to you and many heard this that and understood that John and thought to themselves that John will live forever but that's not what Christ said Christ said that even if I want him to remain alive until I come what is that to you it's the critical point is what not what I'm going to do with it but the critical point is why do you care why do I care and when we say that we should not care Christ said what is that to you what do you want for each and every one of us the Lord has a personal relationship and we need to have that personal relationship and that will be the case when we uh, go after and hunt let's say that personal relationship and we do not lose that relationship um, moving here and there and may we find that grace from Christ so that we may walk exactly to the uh, steps of Christ those latter days because these are maleficent days and this is the last episode of John for uh, because after five years he is gonna go to Patmos and there God is gonna visit him he was about 85 to 90 years of age then and God is gonna visit him and he's gonna reveal to him the beautiful book that we read later on that is called Revelations describing what they were at the time and just before the rapture of the church what he was revealed and what is about to happen in the future but now let us say in this epistle of John a let an epistle that is speaking specifically to one person to one brother and we've said this before that the first epistle of John was mainly speaking to all, all the Christians all the believers of all ages and it's not John who actually sent it but we know that the one who sent it is the Spirit of God the second epistle of John is speaking to the local church to a local church and to us today it's in every local church in Greece or the, this world and of course again it's not John who wrote this and delivered but it's God now this third letter has a specific meaning because it's speaking personally to Gaius and in specific to each and every one that is a servant of God that means set free from sin and gave himself up to be a servant of God so that his fruit may be towards blessing therefore if you are set free from sin and you are now a slave and a servant to God it, is it sure that your fruit is going to be towards blessing the answer is no there are circumstances because the good fruit and the good result of the tree there need to be circumstances very important indeed and that is why in this episode John speaks about three different people Gaius, Diotrephus and Demetrius these are three people different to one another that God is explaining that are set free from sin and servants of God
and I'm gonna start by the grace of the Lord from Diotrephes who is an important face of that era in the church he's from the ones at the high let's say hierarchy not saying that he's the first one probably a pastor or maybe the elder of the church but rather we see that he is higher up in the church but his fruit is not going to be towards blessing and his end is not going to be eternal life unless he repents and it's very important for us to understand all of us thinking to this episode as being sent to us individually because we need to study that individually thinking and understanding that we may be set for f free from sin because I called upon the name of Christ I repented I rectified because God washed me clean with his blood and I was uh, reborn I studied the word of the Lord and the Lord uh, upgraded me I was able to move forward and be upgraded in his work but this as a servant of God I was able to move forward but this does not ensure that my fruit is going to be towards blessings and eternal life at the end this is not insured why? and a classic example is Diotrephes who had an inner uh, understanding and that was that he was preminiscent he loved to be the first among other people and he even got himself uh, showed himself as a leader and not just that but these two characteristics that started to appear in his heart from the moment that God exalted him and blessed him and I repeat for God to bless him and upgrade him it means that he did not have those things in his heart before but when God upgraded him and exalted him and made him to be from the higher ups let's say of the local church inside of him in his heart who is maleficent and wicked Satan was able to fool him and his mind was corrupted because the heart is wicked and was able to fool him and he was able to corrupt his mind and the result was that he thought to himself as being the best the, high, the, high, the most high one and maybe he was maybe God has exalted him that much but when God is exalting you what you and we need to do is to give back the glory to God and all praise to him understanding and explaining that without God we wouldn't be able to do anything and without the guidance of the Spirit we wouldn't be able to reach any point or conclusion always our soul is in danger always every single moment no matter how old you are in the church because the enemy is fighting so that he may corrupt your heart and our heart and to lead us to paths that will bring eternal domination and he's creating specific issues that a Christian has to deal with one is loving of yourself thinking to yourself that I am the best and first that is why he says he loves to have the preeminence amongst them the second one is money becoming rich the third one is the love of the desires of the flesh these are the three main issues that every single believer is going through when Christ is blessing them 
loving the first place, loving money, and loving the desires of the flesh. In other words, in the desires of the flesh, in the desire of money, as in the desire of the eyes, and the desire of this life, wanting the first, and being the first. These are the main things that a Christian has to fight against. And an amazing characteristic. Diotrephes, in our example, loved the preeminence amongst the other brothers. And he reached the point to not even receive the apostles, even John. And John actually confirms that he does not receive us. That is in uh, verse 9. He did not receive John, the apostle of Christ, the disciple of Christ. And not just that, but also he is prating against us with malicious words. Just close your mouth, brother. My God protect us. May God protect us. It's unbelievable that he was prodding against us with malicious words. And not content with that, he himself does not receive the brethren. Not only the, uh, the apostles, John, but the brethren as well that accept the apostles. And not just that, and forbids those who wish to accept the apostles. And if he is not successful, he is putting them out of the church. That is terrifying. Loving the first place, the things of this world, the personnel becomes a dictator. May God protect us. Because this characteristic a person may have it in his personal life in his household life and with authority to just confirm his own mind and do as he pleases and not accept the word of God in the church or his household or himself even his heart may God protect us and not just that and those that he accepts Those that accept the apostles and the word of the Lord, he is casting away even worse. May God protect us, my dear brethren, because these are situations that are very difficult and dangerous that we cannot say that we are not in danger of. We are all in danger of these situation, And the word of the Lord confirms it, that our soul is always in danger. And what? Is John going to do with that person? He says in verse 10, ah, If I come, I will call to mind his deed, which he does. He has boldness. He has the direction of the Spirit. But it's not easy. Because he is not going to accept John. And he is not accepting even the brethren that accept us. This is a very basic uh, example that John himself describes Christ to us in our days in the latter church from which we are all in, gra in, in grave danger of. But also there's another uh, person, a young one, and uh, especially blessed. He does not have great characteristics. Not only he is not of the one of the first, but he is one of the, if we may say, not as valuable member of the church, but a brother of God, as it is Christ, and his name is Demetrius, who has a good testimony from all, and from the truth itself. All peoples that know get to got to know Dem Demetrius have a good word for him. And I want to make he an example and give an example. Diotrephes was one like Demetrius was once. And 
And he had good testimony from everybody. That is why the word of the Lord is sowing uh, to us Demetrius right after Diotrephes. He has a good testimony from all. And from the truth itself, it's confirming what is the truth? The word of the Lord. Who is the word of the Lord? The word of Christ says that I am the truth. And Christ confirms upon these. Therefore Christ, when he's working, when Demetrius is working, he God is blessing him. Whatever he's doing, he's blessed. He's enjoying the grace of God. That is why he's having a good testimony. Because he is enjoying the grace of God. And how happy am I when I see such children in the church that they are blessed by God no matter what they do and they do everything they open up their hearts they give out their souls their life anything that you would ask them to do they will do it because they are humble they know that they are simple and insignificant and there's nothing that someone would ask from them and they will not do it a good testimony therefore a good testimony from God and us the elders of the church and now we also bear witness says in uh, continuing on and we understand that God is blessing him and you know that our testimony is true says how much would I like our children to be like that our girls and our youngsters our boys and I'm saying these a bit personally our children, our nephews, our grandchildren. And I'm not speaking about my household per se, but we are all one family and we have one mother and one father. And our father is God and our mother is the church. As Joseph was with Benjamin, we are from the same mother. That is why Joseph was liking that child. But we're also going to see it in Gaius. All the children are our children, and all the grandchildren are our grandchildren, and all brothers are brothers with one another. And Christ is not uh, cutting back, let's say, and he is calling us brothers. Outside, a reality that is far away from Diotrephes, Demetrius therefore is a good youngster that has a good testimony from more anyone who's seeing him they're proud of him let's say christ is blessing him and he's ha and he's having a good testimony because of it and the elders they bear witness of it but he has not confirmed and received his end if he remains like that humble faithful and we're going to see the how. We're going to see the person that is always going to receive the grace of God. And this person is Gaius. A brother that is not a youngster anymore, but he's not an elder either. He is a servant. He has good deeds. If I may say and I do not know it because there's no hierarchy in the church because we are all brothers but if uh, to put it in a human perspective that we th there's an authority he's not as high as Diotrephes he's younger than him but he's blessed and Apostle John says that I'm writing this epistle to you To you that I love with truth, in truth. And John loves Gaius in truth. But also Christ loves people like Gaius, servants in truth. Servants that are set free from sin and enslave their own selves to Christ. And their fruit is towards holiness because they have two main characteristics. The first one that have they have the truth, they remain the truth, 
but the most important thing is that they are walking accordingly to it. They are not cutting off the edges, let's say. The word of the Lord is to the yes and amen. And we want to be like that. Because in the church of the Lord, we are being educated because this is the university of God. And we know the truth because Christ revealed it to us. He is putting into our hearts these words. And our work now is to know the truth by grace and by revelation, but also to walk accordingly to it with our own proactiveness with our own efforts, with our own uh, affliction and fight and struggle. Apostle Paul says that you have fought the good fight, and that is to walk accordingly to the truth, knowing the truth and walking accordingly to it, to not be driven away from the truth. Not just that, though. That is why we're going forward. For I rejoiced greatly... Uh, and in verse 4, actually, I have no greater joy than to hear my children, says Apostle John, says God, through this word, walk in truth. There's no greater joy to use us so that people may be saved. The answer is no. The greater joy is to walk in the truth have it and walk in it because if you're such a servant then indeed your fruit is going to be towards blessing and your end is going to be eternal life and then truly your life is going to be towards the blessing and exaltation of god but it's not just that that's not the only characteristic that a guy possesses The reason why John loves him in truth, the last, the other characteristic is that the love that he has is not in word and with tongue, let's say, but rather with actions and truth. It's not by uh, it's showing love uh, to someone, to some people, but he loves all brothers as he loves them as Christ loved him. And this cannot be done unless someone is full in the Spirit. So that as he is full in the Spirit and faith of the truth, then the faith from love is activated. The truth is activated because of love, as that person now is full of love, and that love is not of this earth, but rather, it's a love that comes from the fullification of the Spirit of God as it is poured out from God into the person. And through the Spirit, that person now truly loves. Of course, firstly, he loves his own brothers in the church, all of them. Younger or elder, good or bad, Faithful or not as much faithful. Wise or fool. All of his brothers he loves. Why? Because that is how God is loving us. All of us. Young or elder. Wise or fool. Significant or insignificant. All of us. God is loving. Why? Because he, the human Christ has the Spirit of God without measure so that his love is falling, is filling up the heart of the person of Christ and now he is able to love all of us with that love therefore that is poured out into the heart of a person Christ that is with that love that is poured out into the heart of John as well and with that love that is poured out into the heart of Gaius as well, Gaius now is able to love all his brothers. First of all, his brothers from the same church that have the same mother, the same church, that are fighting together, that they're seeing one another. There's going to be time where we're going to see one another as well. 
that they are praying together, they are serving together, they are collaborating together, that they are sitting on the same seat, that they are eating together, they are having collaboration, let's say. Brothers that are staying and remaining in the doctrine of the apostles, the breaking of the bread every Sunday, all together in the meeting with one another as they eat together and at the end in the prayers they pray all together not just some of them but all of them all together these brothers therefore I repeat that are from the same mother that are belonging to the same local church Gaius is loving not with words and uh, tongue let's say but with action and truth what does it mean for you to love with action and truth you are serving them in other words God is not unjust to forget the work of your faith and the affliction of your love the struggle of your love that you have sown as you served that is serving and will continue on serving that's love with a struggle of love and work of faith with compassions from Christ and from within the word of the Lord and not just that but also you, we are presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice to God that is a true doctrine so that God may reveal to them as and bless them as they are not becoming a part of this world but God because of it he's revealing to them his work not all, just to them as God is acting in them the ability and the want and we do thank God for that therefore this is Gaius who loves his brothers in the local church but not just that but he also loves his brothers from the other churches as well and we need to pay attention to it he loves all the reborn brothers of God for us our church is Kifisya but also the f uh, the free apostolic church as well but also the others not just ourselves but the others as well do we love them? Of course we do. And we pray so that God may bless them and b make them His and then ours. Why are they not ours? Because we do not have the unity of faith to the truth of the gospel and the unity of the Spirit by the management of the Spirit. Therefore, we have differences. But the love is able to overcome multitudes of sin even multitudes of differences because at one point God will come to receive one church and that one church is the dove of Christ of the Lord because many are the queens 80 are the queens, 60 are the concubines and uh, young girls that cannot be numbered but one is the church of the Lord and we can read it beautifully uh, in the word of the Lord that God loved his church and he gave himself up for what reason? so uh, one, firstly so that he may bless the church and holify the church as he's going to set her clean with his blood but he's got see, the church is going to be holified and as he sees being cleansed by the word of the Lord so that she may be received as a bride and blessed church with the rapture of the church a glorious church having no blemish so that she can be holy this is the work of Christ to all this era of the New Testament especially however in those latter days that he's gonna come to receive his church we uh, the church needs to be revealed glorious without a blemish or a freckle 
And this is what we are expecting. We are waiting for the glory of God in the church, for the fire of the Spirit, and it is written and cannot be undone that in the latter days the mountain of the place of God, and what is the place of God? Is the church, of course, if the church is the pillar and the foundation of truth and that mountain is going to be upgraded and lifted up over all other mountains and all nations are going to come and visit the church and come in the church and they're going to say what? teach us the truth because the truth is going to set us free from sins, issues, afflictions and truth will bring us to Christ. As the word of the Lord says that he, no one goes to Father but through me. And the love, no one comes to me unless God invites him and draws him near. The love of Father, of the Father is leading us to Christ and the truth of Christ is leading us to the Father again. And what do we become? As you and I are one, all of them, let us be one. That is the church of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And this church is going to be received by Christ. A church that truly is going to be glorious, holy. And in this church, God is going to throw down. And in that glorious church, God is going to take away the boundaries of a person of all people to understand and know the truth as he's gonna also take away Satan and this is where it's gonna take place th when it uh, wh what the word of the Lord says that the death has been consumed because God is gonna receive one church glorious without a blemish or a freckle and these are the characteristic of the person of God until now because the diatrophies could be like that as well up until now he has a truth Gaius has a truth he walks upon it he has love with action and truth and he has affliction and struggle of love and actions of faith to all brothers and anyone and everyone that he's waiting for God to draw them near and invite them to the great rebirth of these latter days and add them to the church and we are not them but may we be in this church that God is going to create unfortunately Diotrephes is not going to be in it unless he managed to repent Gaius surely he's going to be in Demetrius it's highly likely you me May God help us. May God show us mercy. And may God holify us so that we may be prepared to be. But we have some walking to do still. We have a road ahead of us. Diotrephes, John is going to come. Christ is going to come. And will call to man his deed. For the actions that he has done. Prodding against us with malicious words prodding against us for Demetrius John comes along to strengthen him so that he may continue on walking on that path that God is leading him so that God may be with him and for Gaius however John has something even better something unique I may dare even say he has a wish and a prayer Christ for him that is and his wish is that as your soul is always in a uh, blessed in your inner person as the inner person is strengthened by the power of the spirit as you are strengthened in your inner person by the power of the spirit so that God and Christ may be able to dwell in you so that you may be able to know the long the 
the dimensions, let's say, of Christ and for the love of Christ to be revealed in your life so that you may be able to be baptized in the full the fullness of the Spirit as Christ is going to live in you to this person and for that person only Christ is praying and he's praying a special prayer and he is wishing a special wish I'm wishing to you I hope to see you shortly and to be healthy as your soul is be healthy in your mind and in your uh, body in your spirit as well in your life too in your household as well in your work in Christ of course yes into all things be healthy be someone as a healthy servant in your body mind and spirit a work a road and a life be healthy in all regards I hope that you are healthy in all ways as your soul is <coughs> and the other thing that is also additional to it the church and in the church and in the way of a person of God is the the blessing is confirmed by you being blessed in all your things and everything you do he is the best and perfect Christian in the eyes of God is it possible for someone to be healthy in all his ways if Christ is praying for that person? The answer is no. Is it possible for a person to be blessed in all his ways if Christ is not praying for that person? The answer is no. The only way for a person to be blessed in all his ways is for Christ to be glad and, in, and joyful because of him and as he is interceding for all of us to God so that we may be rectified and redirected for that person Christ is speaking to God saying God please Father make him be blessed in all his ways in everything he does no matter what he is doing for him to be richly blessed for him to do one but you to give him a thousand if he is trying once, you give him back a, th a thousandfold. And I repeat, why? Is he taking part? Is Christ uh, taking part? Showing partiality? The answer is no, but that person has the truth. He is confirmed by Christ, who is his master and his teacher. But he's also being guided by the Spirit, and that way he's walking in the truth and not just that but the love of God is also poured down in his heart so that he can firstly love his own brothers in the church secondly all the brothers even the alien ones and all peoples with the love of God that is poured down in his heart who is the person therefore that has these unique characteristics and this is not written anywhere else we don't we do not see it in the new testament that wish that prayer we do not see it anywhere else only for guys just for guys uniquely but he is the light ex the bright example for us i wish says john i pray says christ that you may prosper in all things and be in health no matter what happens in your life always just as your soul prospers and a, a unique example that we need to follow but notice that but is also an example for us to call and try to reach how what a beautiful prayer please lord transform me body mind and soul and make me 
Ligaius, who you love in truth, whom you love in truth, and John and you through John, you praying for Gaius to be prosperous in all that he does and be in health just as you, his soul is prospering. That means that he is not just an example for me to imitate, but he is an example that I need to look to attain. And do not forget that Christ is be giving away to the ones who are asking and seeking. Who do you want to look like? If I remember correctly, God once asked me, Who do you want to look like? And I was thinking. And I, th I might have been new in the faith. I was thinking, Peter, Paul, I love John. And I was about to say like John. But I was corrected. And I said, I want to be like you. And I'm not changing this. I still want this. And I'm still saying, please, Lord, make me look like you. But because I am not sure if that prayer can be heard, and I know it, it has been, and it is, the easy thing is for me to say, please, Lord, make me look like Gaius. Imitate him. That person uh, that is not in the first apostolic church now, he is not with the disciples anymore. God help me so that I may be like him, walk in the truth, know the truth, and walking accordingly to it. And for me to love my brothers and all our brothers and all peoples. And I believe God is joyful in this prayer. And maybe we find grace and God is going to give it to us. I mean.